Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Friday evening to you all. Hope you guys are doing well out there tonight. You had yourselves a wonderful day, and I hope everyone's having an awesome start to their weekend out there so far. Here to bring some update information on the tropics tonight. Uh, we have the potential for a tropical system to get going sometime later this weekend, uh, potentially early and next work week. So we're going to speak on that. That's all we're going to speak on is the Gulf of Mexico area of interest. We're not going to talk about the hurricanes and the tropical storms out there in the Atlantic. No use in doing that. Not going to spend any time on that. So this will take all of our focus. Uh, this isn't going to be a 30, 40 minute video or anything like that. We're going to go over all model guidance that we have uh, from today into this evening. We'll talk about what's going on right now. We'll speak on what the National Hurricane Center is saying, and we'll also talk about um, maybe the higher end scenarios of this potential tropical system and the lower end scenarios. I don't just want to come on here and freak everybody out and say, hey, there's a hurricane heading towards Florida. But I will say, uh, as far as states are going to be impacted, if you're tuning in from like Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, please do not freak out about this. I'm going to tell you why this has a very, very low chance to impact you guys. But Florida, unfortunately, at minimum, it looks like y'all are going to get a lot of tropical rain. So we're going to speak on all this. If you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. If anybody has anything that I can pray about or pray over, please put it in the comments below. Let's get rocking and rolling tonight. I hope you folks are doing awesome on this wonderful Friday night. Of course, we're praying for you folks across the southeast impacted by Helene. Let's make sure this is going to work. We don't want to use black. Uh, let's use pink. But, you know, I'm not even really going to draw on this, so I don't even know why I'm really doing this much. But this, this big blob right here, and you're probably going to have a hard time seeing where I'm drawing. Uh, but this is the leftover energy that was in the eastern Pacific over the last couple days. This has since kind of crossed into the western Gulf of Mexico, the Bay of Campeche, which is down here. And really what we're working with here is just a big blob of convection, shower and storm activity, tropical energy, nothing well put together. I don't expect this to become a tropical storm or anything like that over the next really 48 hours. Very low chance uh, for development over the next 48 hours this weekend. I really think if this is going to really turn into an organized tropical system, it's probably going to be as we get into next work week. But this is it. This is kind of the beginnings of uh, some chatter that's starting to get a little bit louder out there in the weather community and just across the southeast about the potential for another tropical system. So just a bunch of unorganized shower and storm activity right now. Nothing put together, but we're watching it. OK, just want to show you kind of the origins of it, the beginnings of it. This is the Gulf of Mexico. Of course, it's the Gulf Coast line up here. And this is Florida right here, which is really going to be the state we're going to be talking about the most while breaking down this potential tropical system. So let's start this off by talking about the Euro. The Euro is typically a very conservative model. Uh, it typically does not show the aggressive scenarios, uh, but it has been quite aggressive over the last day or so. So what, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna just gonna zoom in on the Southeast. And I want you to keep your eyes down here at the bottom of your screen. You see there's a lot of green in the Gulf of Mexico, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina. So let's keep this in motion. So we're going to start this off Sunday morning. Not a whole lot going on. You're going to see an L creeping up on your screen here. Uh, as we're getting into Monday morning, you can see it. There's a 997 millibar already tropical storm. By the way, the next name is Milton. If this turns into something, it will most likely take that name, which is Milton, the M name. Um, as we are moving into Sunday morning, here it comes. Starting to show up better on your screen. Already, I'm sorry, this is Tuesday morning, October the 8th. This is already a 987 millibar high-end tropical storm cruising across the southern sections of the Gulf of Mexico. And here it comes, heading right towards Florida. And uh, we take it all the way into Wednesday morning. We have, uh, you know, a strong tropical storm, low-end Category 1 hurricane uh, heading right towards the west coast of Florida. How big will this system be? Is it comparable to Helene or some of these smaller tropical systems? We're not quite sure, but I can talk a little bit about the structure of this system as we continue to move forward throughout the video and what I think it's going to be and how I think it will deal with a lot more dry air compared to what Helene dealt with, which was hardly no dry air. Uh, so this goes on Wednesday morning into Wednesday afternoon, makes landfall just south of Tampa, the Clearwater area, then of course cruises over the peninsula of Florida uh, Wednesday and then gets back off the coast of the southeast, proceeds to strengthen, and one would argue this kind of re-strengthens into a hurricane and then this heads on out to sea. As you can tell, this doesn't really bring any impacts to Georgia, South Carolina. Is there a chance this could creep a little bit further north? Absolutely, but 
I'm going to talk about why I do not think that's going to be the case. And if you're tuning in from North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, really, uh, of course, just um, reeling after what just happened, I really don't think you have to be concerned about this. Of course, I know people are going to say, you never know, Mitch, but I really don't think you have to be concerned about this. This really could potentially just be a Florida thing. Uh, but GFS, uh, it's running right now. The one thing about the GFS is this kind of, you know, tick back down. Okay, we get into Tuesday morning. We have um, something finally organizing. Takes a little bit longer on this run. Um, 996 millibar low. One would argue that's a depression or a tropical storm. Kind of stays about that strength. It's definitely further south. And just brings a whole lot of tropical moisture to Florida. One thing to note here is we'll back this all the way out to, you know, back to Sunday morning. This coming Sunday morning. Okay, there's already a lot of moisture out ahead of the system. So Florida already getting a ton of tropical moisture, shower and storm activity well ahead of this actual tropical system that moves in. And then the actual tropical system moves in and it moves out. And by the time we get into Thursday, looks like Florida begins to dry out. Next week is going to be very wet regardless for Florida, though. What about the icon model? Okay, here it comes in the bottom of your screen. Uh, Monday evening, already a tropical storm. We take it into Tuesday, midday. Uh, it's a pretty strong tropical storm, 988 millibar low. And then it, you know, we just go on and take it all the way to about Wednesday mid-morning. Makes landfall as a strong tropical storm, maybe low-wing Category 1 hurricane, somewhere between Fort Myers and Tampa. Cruises over the peninsula of Florida during the day Wednesday. And, well, actually, this is as far as we can go, which is 120 hours out. Goes, goes to about midday, early afternoon Wednesday. And, uh, of course, this would impact most of Florida, except maybe the panhandle of Florida. Uh, but... Same thing, you know, that's three models there all pretty much show kind of the same thing. GFS weaker, Euro is the most aggressive model run. Now, a model run, a model that has been consistently weaker has uptrended, which is the Euro AI model, which is kind of a newer model on the block, but it's done very well. And this is uptrended now, too. So here it comes. We'll take a closer look here. We'll take it to Monday morning, Monday afternoon. We already have a 994 millibar tropical storm heading right towards Florida. This deepens all the way to a 990 millibar low. So that could be just a tropical storm. Millibar doesn't always tell us the strength. Sometimes uh, it doesn't always tell us the strength. We'll just leave it at that. So I would argue that this is probably a tropical storm making landfall south of Tampa, Clearwater. Um and, and most model guidance likes likes the idea of this. Cruises over Florida quickly. I mean, it's a... But one thing I will note with the Euro AI model, it wants it to be a Tuesday morning thing. It's 24 hours earlier than the other models I just showed you. Other models I showed you, Wednesday morning. This model run is Tuesday morning. And then it gets it off the coast, uh, the east coast of Florida. Might strengthen it again, but keeps it a pretty strong system. And heads on out. Okay. Now, one thing that's concerning is if we look at the Euro European Ensemble guidance, all these L's you see on your screen, these are members. Uh, the EPS makes up 51 uh, members, and it throws it all on the screen on this particular output for us. So watch how uh, this kind of goes from like a muted yellow color to a green. This tells us that the members that are here are on average beginning to strengthen. And uh, there, there is some pretty strong members in here. You have some all-out Category 2, even Category 3 hurricanes in here. And that's not Mitch saying there's going to be a Category 2 or 3 hurricane. Some people just twist words like it ain't nobody's business. It is ridiculous. I, believe it or not, someone's probably going to say Mitch said a Category 2 or 3 hurricane's heading to Florida. Please just do not. And it's not just for me, but it's for everybody. I'm just saying that some of these members out of the 51 members are pretty strong. But in general, you look at this and say, hey, that's a lot of L's. That's a, a definitely a meme created and put together here to say, hey, there's a solid signal for a tropical system heading towards Florida. And um, they spread out a little bit as it gets a little bit closer to Florida and uh, move over. But the, the concerning thing is, is, you know, this is for Wednesday morning, right? So this is the current run. If you look at the run overnight last night, look. Big spread, not near as many members, and the members are not near as strong. And you look at the current member, a uh, current run again, and comparison, see how they all kind of tighten up, and then there's stronger members in there. I know the numbers are probably very small. You probably barely can see them on your screen. But you got some um, 980s, 970s, heck, even some 940s in there, millibar low. So that would be a stronger hurricane, no doubt. But you notice none of these members get into Georgia, get into Alabama, get up to South Carolina. 
None of them. And I'm going to talk about why there's high confidence this will stay a Florida thing. But talking about the environmental conditions that would support maybe strengthening, in my opinion, I don't think this has don't want to speak too soon, but I really don't think this has a high end ceiling. And I'm going to speak on why here in a second. But sea surface temperature certainly warm. This is in Celsius, 29, 30 degrees Celsius, mid 80s in Fahrenheit. Okay, so the Gulf of Mexico is still very warm, supports tropical development. And then you look at the upper wind pattern. These are winds at about, you know, 35, almost 40,000 feet up in the air. Okay, we talk about this a lot, right? When we're breaking out a tropical system. So this is the airflow and the upper levels of the atmosphere, the air speed too. So one thing, one thing I want to note, and we've been talking about this a lot in the morning videos, a big cold front diving down, and let's use a different color. Big cold front diving down here, big dip in the jet, okay? That means the flow is going to be aggressive out the west right in here. That is actually going to be what pushes our tropical system west to east. Okay, but this thing does not have a nice uh, like divergence flow. There isn't a lot of air dispersing out um, in all areas of the system. Okay, it is dispersing outward, but it's all getting pushed out on one side of the system. So uh, basically, the air in all levels of the atmosphere is pushing in one direction, and that is west to east. So air is being dispersed way out like this. So that that does that would create a pretty healthy environment out ahead of the storm. Rising air. This would basically create a big push of moist air right over Florida, well ahead of the system. Kind of like, remember what we were talking about with Helene? Helene was kind of in that same area, but going this way, right? And there was a lot of air being pushed out like this ahead of Helene, creating that pre-rain event across North Carolina, which is ultimately what helped really saturate those soils up in North Carolina and set the stage for the disaster that is, you know, still ongoing right now. Uh, but of course, this is going to be moving the other way. This is going to be going more so west to east instead of south to north. Okay. But if you notice on this side, a lot of air going against the system. And even though it's working in tandem with the actual direction of the system, it's still going to create shear on the back side of this low. This is going to allow for a lot of dry air that's going to be way up here to kind of get wrapped into the circulation of this system as it kind of cuts down on a certain side of what will likely be Milton if this develops. So this indicates dry air, moist air on your screen. Doesn't take a rocket scientist to probably know that the dry air is brown and the green air is, um, <laughs> there I go again, it's calling it green air. The green on your screen is moist air. So we look at the Euro and check out what happens, all right? So this is developing down here. There's already, and if you look really closely here, there's already dry air starting to get into this thing. I know that it's way down here at the bottom of your screen. Already dry air starting to get in. Tons of dry air way up here. By the way, this is going to create an amazing atmosphere up here into the southeast as a lot of dry air working now. Already dry air trying to get into the system. How compact or strong is this, is this cocooned core cocooning itself with that moist air? we got to figure that one out. Um, but already, as we are getting like into late Wednesday evening. Sure, it says, it says it's a 982 millibar low, but that is, I'm going to talk about here in a second, the actual National Hurricane Center mentions the fact that this could be a subtropical uh, storm. The reason why is because it's going to be lacking true tropical characteristics because of all this dry air getting wrapped into the southern and southwest side of this system. All the moist air is on this side and way out ahead of this system. Okay, because air is being pushed out on this side. Air is being pushed against the system on this side. This is creating shear on the western and southern side of the system. And this is allowing for an opening to get that dry air in. So this could be just a, the structure of this storm is not going to resemble Helene at all. Going to be a lot of dry air involved because there's going to be so much on top to the north and west. Um, so one would argue this is going to prevent this from becoming one of those hiring hurricanes. Um, but the dry air actually is pretty wild. The dry air actually goes all the way and actually undercuts the system. It gets all the way into Southern Florida and the, all, all the moist air is just kind of on one side of the system. So pretty wild stuff. This, this, this system will actually help to actually yank down dry air all the way down to the peninsula of Florida late next work week this could actually introduce your first fall feel of the fall season 
uh, to Florida after this tropical mess moves out the way. I really think that has the possibility to happen as the backside flow yanks in a lot of dry air, brown air, just kidding, uh, down into Florida. Okay, so I think regardless between now and next Friday morning, you're going to get several inches of rain, 6 to 12 inches of rain as possible in certain areas. You know, once you get up to Orlando, you know, it starts to, you know, decrease a little bit. Orlando points south, I mean, Tampa, the Space Coast points south, everybody anywhere from five to as much as nine inches of rain, folks. This could increase too. So a big issue with rain, the big, I think rain's going to happen regardless. The big wild card here is obviously the winds and the storm surge. We don't need any more storm surge. I've seen some pictures and some of these beaches in the west coast of Florida, it looks awful. It's kind of a storyline not being talked about as much from the disaster to the north. But some of these beaches just are, the, the beach is basically moved into, you know, the, the, the first couple road networks, um, you know, into the coastline of the west coast of Florida, if that makes sense, twisting my words up. But it, we don't need a storm system in this area, even if it's weak. We really don't, you know, and and of course, you know, you look at some of the worst case scenarios with wind. If, if something like the Euro was to happen, I mean, obviously this would bring 50, 60, 70, 80 mile per hour wind gusts across the peninsula of Florida, especially uh, the west coast of Florida when the system makes landfall. So this would just be another big time system. Let's hope that doesn't happen. Um, of course, you got the GFS, which is, you know, a better case scenario. Folks, this only brings some gusty 30, 35 mile per hour wind gusts. So I don't just want to show you the worst case scenario. I want to show you the, the better case scenario also. So, yeah, I really think this is only going to be a thing for Florida. I know I've said that multiple times and I'll certainly will eat the crow if I'm wrong. Um, but I really think it's just going to be a Florida thing. So right now, let's see if we have another update right now. The National Hurricane Center has this at a 60% chance to develop in the next seven days. I think they will bump this from a, I'm sorry, a 50. I, I think I said 50. I think they will bump this from a 50 to a 60, maybe even just a 50 to a 70% chance, maybe at the 8 a, I'm sorry, the 8 p.m. update here in the next, when is, I don't even know what time it is. What time is it? So here in the next um, hour, an hour and some change, they could bump this up from a 50 to a 60 or a 50 to a 70. If it goes to a 70, this will show up in red. It will be a high risk of development. Um, but it doesn't change anything I just showed you in the video. So we just see I continue to watch this stuff. Um, I'm pretty confident we're going to get a tropical, a name storm out of this. It's just, um, is it going to be a hurricane? Let, let's hope it is not a hurricane. So that's all I got, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. God bless all y'all. And um, yeah, talk to you in the morning.